Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we're continuing to build along this shoreline. We're going to add a small town, much smaller than the one we built in episode 55, but much more focused on details. And to connect it up with the rest of the city, we're going to have to build a few bridges. I was inspired by this area of undeveloped land near San Juan. So we're going to be taking inspiration from this, from its waterways, its towns. Uh, but first we need to start by flattening all this out because I just want it to be an easier place to work with. Uh, we are going to make plenty of use of the hills on this map, by the way, in later episodes. Uh, but for now, I want to keep working with a flat area. I honestly think it's just more conducive to this kind of build where you have a bunch of open undeveloped land because you're not going to notice small differences in elevation with this kind of detailing in this kind of build. So where we do take advantage of the terrain, I want it to be very noticeable. So we're gonna do some hill-based builds uh, fairly soon, but I don't wanna get ahead of myself. So let's connect up this area of the shoreline to the rest of the city. We have this kind of semi-highway, semi-arterial road that runs east to west from our town of Gatonia, and we're gonna turn it into a normal undivided highway here that uh, is gonna actually turn back into a sort of divided highway that we're gonna custom make with some nice assets. Then we have a smaller shoreline road here that runs along the beach, or what is currently the beach. Uh, this is actually going to end up being a rocky shoreline instead of a beach, because we already have tons of beautiful sandy beaches in the city, and I wanted to do something a little bit different along this shoreline. Now, this is our first real foray into developing the outskirts of Todos Santos. So I didn't really have too much of a plan going into this build, if I'm being honest. So I really just wanted to start by laying down the roads and seeing how everything was going to develop from there. Of course, with all this flat, open land, I needed to break it up somehow. So what I decided to do is, of course, just take inspiration from San Juan. And there seem to be a lot of waterways that run through this area, so we're going to do that. And that's going to serve to just break up the landscape and give us something just to bounce ideas off of as we try to develop this area. So we're going to add our own river, starting at this inlet over here. This is where the uh, small town that we're going to build this episode is located. Uh, instead of using the terrain tools to make a river, which is really, really annoying and always ends up uh, being way too wide, uh, I decided to just use road. So I'm running this road across here, and then I'm just dragging this road all the way over to this little lake by our town of Gatonia over here, which is where our first bridge is going to be located. Normally I would like to do a little bit of research before starting a build like this, uh, but this time I just decided to build it. I have no idea what this was supposed to be. The, so the story that I've come up with is that this crossing here where the freeway goes over the river uh, serves as a form of water control. So as water comes into this lake down from the mountains, it would then meet this dam where they would be able to control the flow of water either keeping it in the reservoir behind it or letting it flow out. But that's going to be important because the area on the other side of this dam thingy is basically lowland. So they might have issues with flooding and maybe that's why they built this thing in the first place. It doesn't seem like a very realistic place for a dam. I really don't know much about that kind of thing. <laughs> and it's actually quite difficult to find information on it or at least information that's accessible and understandable by a layperson, uh, and that is also easily translated to city skylines. There's lots of technical stuff that doesn't really address like how things actually look like they just tell you how things work but that doesn't necessarily translate into building something in city skylines but anyway that's the story of why this is here and why it looks like this as opposed to being just a normal bridge uh, by the way i used intersection marking tool to add that retaining wall there which was a good idea at the time but uh, the retaining wall assets had some sort of issue. They had to be updated, and now they don't really work the same with IMT. When the asset updated, all the instances where I had used this pack of retaining walls with IMT were deleted, which kind of sucks, but it's not a huge deal because I hadn't done it that much. I mostly do retaining walls by hand because I have a little bit more control over them. Um, but in this instance, I had to come back and replace them manually. And that's not a knock against the retaining wall asset or anything. I mean, it's an amazing asset. So, and I totally understand that some things just work really weirdly in this game. So I'm not too uh, torn up about it. Anyway, in an area with so much running water where they need to control the flow, I assume they would want some retaining walls here just to like prevent erosion or something. As so we have these retaining walls by Ronix. I'm clipping them into the grass and uh, we'll clean that up with some plowable grass and stuff. Also, just to get the most out of it, I'm stretching it with node controller. Uh, I've been doing that a lot more recently. Stretching decorative assets with node controller can give you a lot of flexibility in making these kinds of things. 
or really anything, honestly, anything you're going to do with networks. Uh, really helpful tool. Of course, I'm using the old version of Node Controller. I think I've talked about that before, uh, but basically upgrading to the new one, apparently you can lose some of your Node Controller adjustments. So I'm just going to put off upgrading unless I absolutely have to. And then of course we need uh, some intakes, outtakes. I don't really know what they're called, but it's the part of the dam where the water actually flows through when the gates are open. I tried adding a maintenance walkway that goes down here so people could get to this area and do, uh, well, maintenance, but the build didn't really work. It got really annoying. So I just gave up and decided that they're not gonna be able to maintain this, which is uh, perfectly fine in the context of City Skylines, I think. Also, uh, just to give the illusion that there's actually space that water can pass through there, I take these green screen props, turn them black, and push them back in to the floodgates. Now I pulled back and I thought that the river looked a little bit too clean. So I'm just taking these roads that I used to make the river and kind of stamping out a little bit of like an estuary looking thing by the outlet for the river. And then following the path of the river all the way back to the dam that we just made, just changing it up just a little bit to make it look a little bit more random. It's still meant to be like a controlled river. Uh, this wouldn't be the natural course of the river. It's not windy enough for that, but I just wanted to give it that little bit of a more natural look. Earlier, I mentioned that this uh, undivided highway was gonna turn back into a divided highway of sorts, which we're gonna build now. I'm just using network multi-tools, a uh, parallel function to add a second set of networks here. Honestly, I should've just used parallel road tool, but uh, it works fine enough with network multi-tool. And I'm using these roundabout roads because I just really love this plain look that they have. Anyway, uh, they run up to this river here, which of course leads us to... I don't know why, but I really like this bridge that I stumbled across on Google Maps. Uh, this is uh, right next to the town that we're gonna be taking inspiration from. And one thing I like about it that is kind of tough to do in city skylines is getting it to look rectangular and right angled. Because when you connect roads together in city skylines, uh, they kind of look like this. So at first I thought node controller would solve all my problems, but it really didn't just because of the nature of this asset. It's actually a really nice looking industrial bridge, but it just doesn't work for this application. I tried this road and this one 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 and this one, uh, this one again, this one, also this one. And I deleted everything and decided just to do it from scratch. Why I wanted to initially use a single segment instead of doing a dual bridge like this is because I don't like the burned in barriers that you end up getting on the center of two elevated roads, if that makes any sense. So I wanted to do a custom barrier and not be limited to the burned in versions. So that meant that if I was gonna do parallel roads like this, I had to use ground versions, which of course makes it much more annoying to detail because you have this big berm here, which is just so annoying to work with, but that's what we ended up going for. And as usually seems to happen with this kind of thing, it seems like it's really annoying to do at first, but you know, as I was building, it ended up being a fun challenge. Now, I wanted to really emphasize the right angledness of this bridge, if that's a term. So I wanted to cover up all this ugly curved stuff over here. I'm using these uh, very nice concrete slab decals. I like using different textures like this every once in a while, instead of just sticking to the themes asphalt and pavement texture. And then I used these roadblock assets to get that custom barrier I was talking about. Maybe you can see what I was talking about. If I had two elevated versions of roads here, they'd have that like procedurally generated barrier in the middle and that just wouldn't look very good with our custom one. So now we're gonna use some retaining walls and PO just to get those last few details on this bridge and blend it into the environment, uh, make it look like what I'm going for. And then we're gonna move on to the nearby town.
because we're going to be adding uh, some development here, I wanted to add a brief canal. So right at the outlet of the river, I'm just using some retaining walls just to give the appearance that they have had uh, these put in here just to prevent erosion and give them a little bit more space to build on. I don't know, but I find this result very satisfying how the grass just like seamlessly goes over here. And then we kind of double down on that by adding uh, these little additions here. I don't know exactly like what these are for, but just uh, some little caps on the canal. Uh, using sharpened corners looks really good with these retaining walls when you do angled stuff like this. Before we get to building the road network and the, putting some buildings down, I wanted to define a little bit of a palette that we're going to use for the natural landscape. Uh, I discovered these clusters of trees on the workshop. I think they look really nice and they're going to fit in really well in a lot of these undeveloped places. Uh, so I have a few of those put down, some grass clusters, and of course our usual acacia trees, palm trees, all that stuff. And mountain grass. Can't forget the mountain grass. Of course, the area along the river here is quite lush, so I have a lot of these, uh, but then we're also going to have patches of grass. I don't know if this is areas of forest that have been cleared, or if it's just kind of naturally there are like patches of grassland here and there, but that's the kind of pattern we're going to be using in this part of the city. I'm still learning how to use them right and to get the right look, uh, to get that kind of distinctively Caribbean foliage look. Um, but I think, you know, even if it's not super accurate, I really like the look of this area. And then of course, just to fill in, we're using our normal low poly tree collection to brush in some forests here and there. Anyway, what really makes this town distinct is this uh, little lagoon or bay, I don't know what it is. But I wanted to make it stand out. So in contrast to the rest of this stretch of shoreline, there are going to be some sandy beaches on one end. These would probably be like the beaches the locals would know about because they're kind of out of the way. There's not really any development by them other than this small town. And you kind of have to go on a long drive to get there. We also have some areas of rocky shoreline uh, that have not eroded yet. And then this lagoon, uh, I assume just because it's shallower or it doesn't drain as easily or something, in real life, it's a different color. Not sure exactly why that is, but I wanted to try to replicate that here. First, I tried uh, using Surface Painter. That uh, was a little too subtle for what I was going for. So what I tried next was dumping sewage into the lagoon which I'm not sure if I'm the first person to ever use sewage uh, for aesthetic purposes, but I hope I'm the last. I actually had the sewage color turned off, I think in the hide it mod, so I did actually have to restart the game. So you'll see the uh, sewage being pumped out there later, but it actually does do a pretty good job of turning the lagoon a nice deep chocolate brown. I would definitely like to hear your feedback once you see that on screen. Let me know what you think of that. If it's too much, it feels a little bit like too strong of a brown. <laughs> um, so I might just uh, change that. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave it. Okay, with sewage out of the way, uh, we're going to start building the town by laying down a road network. There's this cool feature in the town I'm taking inspiration from where there's something that looks like it used to be a T intersection with this highway and then it was at one point turned into this uh, like half diamond interchange. It has this little remnant in the center of uh, the pass through road where you would turn left either onto the freeway or off of the freeway. Uh, so I wanted to add that here using an old industrial road to represent that but not actually connecting it up with the highway uh, because obviously it's disused and blocked off. And we're going to represent that with some details as well. Putting some decals down and some roadblocks and signs just to tell people that uh, they probably shouldn't drive down here. We're going to detail the rest of the road network and the highway later on. But while I was here, I thought I'd uh, drop down here and just add these details while I was thinking of them. But yeah, we're going to do a whole detailed highway build. But before we get to that, uh, we need to finish up building this town. <laughs> Now, 
this bridge isn't as impressive as the other two in terms of scale or detail, uh, but I did want to go for the same theme where we try to make it look nice and rectangular instead of going along with the curvature of the nodes that you normally get. Uh, so that was pretty easy just with some ploppable pavement. Now this town needs some services. So we have a school and a baseball field, a big dirt parking lot that's going to serve the waterfront that we're going to make, and then along the waterfront, there's also a small boat launch, of course, with our characteristic pickup truck and trailer dropping off a boat. There's some kind of generic office building, just using this uh, nice generic clinic building. It has some parking, some decoration, some trees on a nice big lot, some planters, and it serves as a nice introduction to the town if you're heading into it from this intersection. Then over by the bridge on a bit of a slope, just to get some extra water pressure, they have the all important water tower on a somewhat rundown lot, but you know, it serves its purpose. Now when the service is done, then we need to take care of the foliage as well. I'm just using pretty much the exact same palette of trees uh, for the more wild portions of the town. Uh, obviously they have some planter trees, some small palm trees along the avenue and other places, uh, but for the most part, the area along the riverbank, even the canal, they just have a uh, pretty standard Toto Santos woods. There's a little path leading from the parking lot to this crosswalk so that they can get to the shoreline where we're going to add some commercial development so that our Sims can enjoy the view across the bay of the castle and the downtown and all the other cool stuff. And because this is such a small town, they just have a couple businesses here. One of them's a restaurant and the other one, I guess, would be a small bodega of some kind. Uh, this taller corner building that uh, we're going to turn purple, that would be the restaurant. They have a nice fenced off patio in the back so you could uh, sit there and enjoy the view while you eat or drink. There are a ton of tables here, a little waiting area and a second floor as well. Don't know exactly what would be up there, maybe some apartments for the owners or something like that. Next door, there is the little bodega, and they just have a storage area out back where they could keep goods or deliveries or whatever. Now that we've gotten their small commercial zone taken care of, it's time to actually put down some houses so people can move in here. For Toto Santos, I've settled on two kinds of low density residential development. We have the denser one, like this, where we use the one by two houses. And then for bigger plots of land that are more spread out, we have the bigger houses. Uh, in this case, I'm mostly using the denser version, just because I wanted to get that really dense look. And even though the two kinds of buildings uh, are at pretty different scales if you look at them up close, what I'm going for with these kinds of neighborhoods is the Google Earth view. <laughs> so when you look down on it, you get a certain sense of the density, where you can't necessarily tell the size of each building in comparison to buildings in the other part of the city, but all you can tell is how tightly packed they are. And I think these 1x2 houses really work for that tighter view. And then uh, in contrast, these larger buildings, I think they work well on the shoreline, especially in this case, because um, they look like they would be, you know, more expensive houses along the shoreline, of course. Uh, but we'll get into various different use cases for those later in the series as we get to more of the suburban development of Toto Santos, which is going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, we have a dense line of trees separating the town from the highway, and then we also have a nice landscape path with some more landscape type trees along the rocky waterfront. And of course, on the other side of the river, we have more houses. It's a lot harder to fit them into these kind of curved road networks uh, where you get weird angles and stuff like that. And a lot of the road networks that we're going to be building in the suburban development of Toto Santos are going to have elements like this. So it's going to be pretty repetitive and I'm trying to come up with a way to make it interesting in the videos. So I'm working on that and I hope that you will enjoy it. But I'm not going to say any more than that because that's a story for another episode. And we still have to detail our highway. What I love about these roundabout roads is you can pretty much use them for anything. So in this case, we're using them obviously as a highway, but it doesn't look very much like a highway as it is because you need lots of different kinds of infrastructure to make a highway into a highway, if that makes any sense. Uh, so we need some crash barriers, some stripe markers so people don't crash into the crash barriers. That would be kind of counterproductive. Uh, a few of these roadblock assets here and there, just in places where you need to block off an area like that disused portion of road. Lots of trees, of course, because uh, the real life inspiration, it looks like a very nice treed avenue. 
I also wanted to emphasize the contrast between this older disused portion of road and uh, the newer details of the freeway. So we have uh, this nice stripe marker here, and I wanted to make it really faded to look like it uh, was quite a while ago that this adjustment was made to the road, uh, but you can still just see that little bit of difference there. In keeping with the inspiration, I wanna take these trees and bring them all the way down the highway. Uh, we're gonna connect this up and detail all this next episode. We're gonna film the whole shoreline next episode, uh, so don't worry about if there are any gaps here. Uh, same thing with the crash barriers. You need to bring these all the way along. I think it's easier to do just uh, using the decorative networks for these long sweeping curves uh, rather than doing single segments with IMT. It also allows you to break it up more easily. So like where we have the roadblocks there, you don't need to worry about adjusting the offset and IMT. You can just start a new segment on the other side of the obstacle. I'm imagining that the reason the other intersection had that uh, disused portion of road is that they built a new intersection here. Uh, so it's basically the same type of junction, uh, just a little bit more high capacity and placed better for whatever reason. I mean, I'm not a traffic engineer, technically. I mean, I guess sort of I am for Toto Santos, but anyway, uh, it's more decorative, it looks nicer, and it functions well enough. Uh, because this is meant to be a roundabout road, the speed limit is a little low by default. So you just gotta go through and bump that up. Maybe that's a little fast, actually. I don't know. 100 uh, kilometers per hour seems pretty reasonable for a kind of semi-freeway like that. That's like 62 miles per hour. Uh, it might be a little fast. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that. Now we just have a couple more details left that I forgot to put down. We have the bus line. We're extending this from Puerto del Sol and uh, Catonia, the other town that we made. This is going to basically run along this whole shoreline and serve all these towns that we're going to make. They have four bus stops in their tiny little town. Uh, seems good enough to me. I also forgot to add some stairs here. There's this big gap, so uh, going down to the shoreline, they have these. I love these stair assets. They're very flexible. You can use them in all kinds of situations, but uh, they work well for making stairs, not surprisingly. And cover up that gap with a lily pilly and an acacia. That's a classic trick by now. Here's the sewage. Um, let me know what you think. It eventually spreads out and fills the entire lagoon, um, but let, let me know what you think. Is the color too dark? Does it uh, remind you too much of sewage? Here's a better shot of that. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Todos Santos. It's been a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.